Hi, my name is Hiroyuki Sanada, and I play Lord Tranaga in FX's Shogun. Now, Yo, Toranaga-sama is an absolute go of a character. As we can all see, much like with my last video covering Fallout, another successful video game adaptation, and more importantly, a show to add to Amazon's collection of Infinity Stones as they make their case as the best quality streaming platform. But seeing how I am such a simpleton, I am yet again extremely late to the party when it comes to what is Hollywood's first attempt at another Game of Thrones style show without it actually being in the universe they get their inspiration from. And no, I am not talking about those later seasons filled with cock jokes, incompetent writing, and goddamn Bran the Dumbass. <laughs> but we are not here to discuss garbage or open up closed wounds of past trauma, and I am definitely not here to downplay, disregard, or even compare and contrast Game of Thrones early seasons or otherwise to the masterclass of grace and craft on a screen Shogun attempts to deliver its audience over its 10 episode span. Apparently the only season and 10 episode span of the show that we as an audience are ever going to get. Allegedly. And while the fantastic writing, incredible action set pieces, engaging characters, thoughtfully paced narrative, tense dialogue sequences, and beautifully shot on location settings will surely be missed in a Hollywood landscape that seems to be diverting from all of those aspects and entertainment that I just mentioned. I honestly feel like I have way too many personal thoughts this time around when it comes to the show itself to continue the glaze this early on, hence the title of an incomplete masterpiece. And while I, and I know the majority of you, can't wait for me to share my L takes so I can get my integrity handed to me in the comments, as always, first, let's talk. <sighs> now, as someone who barely knows how to read and doesn't really venture out too much into the cinema world of the yesteryears, I'm pretty sure, like with the most of you, it's fair to say that I was going in relatively blind into Shogun without any previous knowledge of the novel that it's based off of and the 1980s adaptation. Again, much like with Fallout, a true casual, a normie, if you will. Much like our protagonist and POV audience character, John Blackthorne, an English pilot who I will definitely just be referring to as Ajin throughout the majority of this video, Japanese for pilot, sent to establish trade in Japan after the Portuguese were like, nah, I was here first, bro, and continued to keep the Japanese ignorant to the outside world. With the crew depleted and pretty much making it into Japan on their last legs, the Ajin finds himself captured in a foreign land and soon finds himself thrown right into the middle of a political struggle of his goat, <coughs> I mean his Lord Toranaga-sama, one of the Council of Regents that was established to control all of Japan after the previous Taiko of the country passed away. With the Council of Regents attempting to vote and backstab Toranaga-sama out of his political power, and pretty much take his body from his head. You watch as the captured Ajin and Toranaga-sama bond over their differences in culture, mannerisms, battle tactics, past experiences, environmental threats, and simply their own different ways of life, as the pieces of betrayals, hidden secrets, and conflicting agendas come crumbling down around them that could shape the future and fate of Japan forever. Obviously, for everybody watching this video that has actually watched the show in its entirety, you'll notice that I kept that plot synopsis extremely vague. Honestly, more vague than I usually do, because in reality, if you were to really dive into the complexities and deep nuances of the themes of loyalty, honor, self-sacrifice, and cultural duties that one is born into that the narrative of Shogun is riddled with, you'll have a video longer than one of the episodes itself. Which might sound like a bad thing, and in a way could be perceived as a show that more than likely has terrible pacing issues, which I would say is a pretty normal assumption given the quality of TV shows we've been asked to ingest as an audience over the last, hmm, half decade. 
What I can say is that it's been a relatively long time since I have watched a show with this much depth and care for the audience. It's pretty crazy as the directors, writers, and actors pretty much hold your hand and guide you through a narrative and character relations that frankly could flip and turn on its head at any given moment. And that's mostly due to the performance of our pilot. As mentioned before with John being our audience's POV character, it's safe to say that for casuals such as myself, nailing your POV character is essential to pretty much every single element of storytelling that comes afterwards. And while for me personally, I won't lie, it took me quite a while for me to get on board with John's character, I think honestly halfway through the show, maybe even episode 6 was the point where he finally started to grow on me. But when he finally does, it's great to watch as John slowly becomes more entangled with the Japanese people and their culture, as you learn that there is more to the barbarian that washed up on the shore that meets the eye. But as you saw with the intro of this video, the opening credits so to say, Toranaga-sama is truly the star of the show. One of the most detailed and tightly crafted characters I've seen in quite a while, played by Hall of Fame actor Hiroyuki Sanada himself. It is always a pleasure as an audience member to watch that man work. You watch as Toranaga-sama is determined on the path of peace and prosperity, pushed, swayed, and prodded to the point of war from his outside enemies, and even from his own inner circle of loyal men, who see and desire more for their lord than even their lord himself. But as mentioned before, as the pieces of inner betrayal and plans of deception unfold around him, you watch as Toranaga-sama fights and comes to term with his inner struggles of power and what is right as he alone attempts to bear the weight of Shogun, the savior of Japan from the corrupt regions within. What's interesting though, and unfortunately an aspect of the narrative that I didn't really care for, so here is definitely your time to take out your notes or timestamp the video for a classic Greater L take, but the obvious romance subplot of our fish out of water POV character falling in love with our hot highborn translator, which, don't get me wrong, I get it. It was just an aspect of the story that I honestly couldn't wait to be over. And that's not to say that it was because of poorly written characters or even cheap tricks or contrivances that made the pairing feel unnatural or inorganic. It was honestly quite the opposite, and I was surprised at how the writing team was able to stray away from too many cliches, and I was thoroughly impressed at how intense I personally felt at some point watching the love triangle. It was definitely more of a pacing issue for me, and mostly the fact that I just wanted to see more Toranaga-sama. I also want to say justice for Buntaro, but he's kind of a dick. Overall, it's kind of hard not to praise a show with such grandiose aspirations that actually stuck the landing as well as Shogun did. And while for someone such as myself, it might have felt a little incomplete due to myself having the attention span of a donut, as well as just wanting to see my goat actually go through with the cliche checkers version of Crimson Sky, instead of going with the 4D chess version that our lord was playing. Without me sounding like an ungrateful simpleton, Shogun was an absolutely incredible show, packed to the brim and honestly was a show that you could say was almost overfilled with engaging and fantastically written characters, sewn together with a narrative that most writers and directors can only dream of achieving nowadays. With carefully crafted world building and a production team that went balls to wall to create an environment that actually feels lived in and fleshed out, with action set pieces, realistic battle tactics, and gore that look like it deserves to be on the big screen, a world that doesn't so obviously look like it was filmed in a box, and a show that felt like it really wanted to be picture perfect with their portrayal of the culture and lifestyle of 1700s Japan, a world of respect, honor, and dignity that hold more weight than the swords they carry around their waist, in a world that definitely demands your viewing experience. So in a ranking system, or I guess you could say a grading system, that is relatively new that eventually won't be new, we started this in 2024, and honestly I would say it's going pretty solid so far. I would say go watch some of those reviews, even though you're just going to see where I rank them here, but I mean, you can still go do your boy a solid. With that being said, Shogun is cinema on the small screen. Yeah, I had my own personal issues with the love story, but again, that's because I'm a goober and just simply wanted more of Toru Nagasama's story. But that's not the story of Shogun. That's why I'm a YouTuber and not working for Hulu. Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video, and if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I should say follow me on Twitter, 
I started a whole new account for this channel, so I'm going to start promoting that more. Again, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you did enjoy, why not click on more while you're at it? Otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today. Bye.